Thank you for the opportunity to talk today. I'd like to talk a little bit about food, particularly diets. It's known that dieters cheat on their diets. Uh, as a matter of fact, caloric consumption is routinely underestimated by as much as 45%. Uh, we can visualize this with a pie chart. Here is the amount of pie eaten. Here's the amount of pie thought to be eaten. Now, cheating on diets has been well characterized. We're here to suggest that people cheat with their diets. So take a look at all of these popular diets. They all have something in common. Each identifies a particular type of food as fattening or otherwise unhealthy and thus to be avoided. Uh, we interpret this as an evolutionary strategy. An organism with a tendency to generate anxiety about food in the general population can increase its availability. We will show that this strategy can function without conscious intention. So if somebody here has warned you off of carbs recently, be kind and put it down to their alleles. Um, <laughs> now diets are sometimes thought to be motivated primarily by concerns of personal health and welfare. This is not the case. Diets are about what other people eat. Uh, one need only visit a paleo website forum to get a tremendous amount of anecdotal evidence for this, but uh, a search of the Google Books database is even more revealing. What we did was we looked for the frequency in these books of a couple of different phrases. So looking at the frequency of my diet as compared to the frequency of your diet <laughs> reveals that it's clear that when we think and write about diets, we're actually more interested in what other people are eating. Now, this is an interesting observation, but could this tendency to obsess about what people are eating uh, be advantageous? As an engineer, I'll turn to a mathematical model. Um, to avoid bias or sudden cravings, we're going to mathematically model the consumption of a generic food stuff. Uh, we'll call this generic food stuff um, a caloric resource, universal because everybody uh, in the population can eat it, with a meager bounty, so there's a limited supply. In a population without cheaters, the rate at which crumbs would be consumed would be described by this simple differential equation. <laughs> yes, there will be differential equations. Um, <laughs> where K is the rate constant for consumption, N is the number of individuals in the population, and crumb is the remaining amount of food stuff. So we'll assume that a basal rate uh, of consumption is K equals 1.0 per person per day. So this is a population without cheaters. Now we add a small population of cheaters, right? So there's a small proportion in this population of cheaters. And the differential equation becomes slightly more complex because the rate at which the cheaters are eating the crumbs can be different from the rate at which the rest of the population, which we'll refer to as suckers, um, <laughs> would be eating the crumbs, and the equation would look like this. All right, so let's look more deeply into here. Um, the cheater population selects the crumb as a type of food stuff to be avoided. They perceive that they have cut their rate of consumption in half, from a K of 1.0 to a K of 0.5. But a good cheater self-deceives. So through self-deception, that 45%, they've actually only cut it by 5%. K has gone from 1 to 0.95. Okay. The sucker population reduces their consumption rate as well due to anxiety that is generated by the cheaters. There's a variety of methods by which this can be accomplished. Foods can be portrayed as unhealthy, frowned upon by certain deities, um, potentially composed of something uncomfortably like chemicals. Um, but, but what is a reasonable decrease in consumption? Um, well, what we did was we looked at the USDA wheat consumption data uh, over the times coincident with carb and gluten anxiety and saw that it dropped by 12%. So this seems like a reasonable decrease from 1.0 to 0.88. And what does this all mean? Well, it means that the cheaters are eating more of the crumbs than the suckers. Put simply, an organism that is genetically predisposed to deceive itself about calories and express its food anxieties to the general population actually gets more food. <laughs> now, you may ask, is this difference significant to the organism? Well, 
So let's assume that half of a cheater's diet, just half, consists of crumbs. Uh, in a population that is closer to subsistence than starvation, uh, these suckers would receive about 1,500 calories per day compared to 1,560 calories for a cheater. And that may seem completely insignificant. But over a modest 20-year reproductive lifetime, this difference is equivalent to 2,400 Krispy Kreme donuts <laughs> or an entire cow. This could mean several pounds of weight gain or loss per year to the organism, which under many scenarios would give the cheater a distinct selective advantage. Thank you very much. Happy to take any questions.